Hello everyone, today is April 1st. It's good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Uh, the Lord has given me a very specific outline to follow today, so I am going to get started with that. The first message is from December 28th. And uh, there's several messages, you know, that I've just been waiting for context, waiting for him to release them. And it's just very interesting how he just picked these things um, for today from various places in time. And it just reminds me of, of that is just who he is. Uh, in the Bible, he does that too. You can find answers for the end in Genesis. You know, it doesn't really follow chronological order. It is... Um, a repeated story told over and over about Jesus Christ and um, this whole this whole journey this whole faith journey this whole life journey and so answers and symbols and things connect connect dots all over throughout scripture and so I just thought that was really uh, fascinating that that's kind of what he's doing here is connecting dots from different periods of time um, but he's going to be delivering a clear message today so this is from December 28th, and it says, Listen, daughter, I want you to write these words. I am everlasting to everlasting. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the one who was and who is to come. I am he. Say to them, the enemy seeks whom he can devour. He is on the loose. And I wrote a note there in the margin that my son came in right at that moment to get a dog toy right then. I just thought it was interesting because he says he is marking his territory. He is looking for men who will shrink down in fear and choose to worship self. Melissa, I am the only one who can make man stand boldly. I am the only one who can make man new. The enemy is mocking me. He is monitoring my prophets and mocking what I have spoken. Melissa, many are not hearing from me, but from monitoring and mocking spirits. My people suffer for lack of knowledge of my word and my true nature. They love what tickles their ears and coddles them without bringing true repentance. I want you to proclaim boldly these words. I am a holy God. I am the one true God. All men will once again remember my name. I am the maker of heaven and earth, and I am the author of your faith. I am not to be mocked. I am not to be considered as one who tolerates the egos of men. My true worshipers know my voice. They know my ways and they hear me through all the noise. They seek me in the deep. The ones who are not listening to me are focused on the sounds of their own voice and the calls from the wicked one. I am cutting through the noise to say, stop. Stop listening to those who do not know my voice, but claim to. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. They are hungry for power and authority and do not stop to consider their ways. They are longing for sonship, but have been snatched up by the trap laid before them. They sought me, but ended up in the net of the enemy. He has lifted them high for all to see, but he has not hidden his face. It is evident, but many are blinded by his cunning schemes. Listen to me, sons and daughters. I am going to tell you this now. I am not coming for the righteous, but for the humble. I am not coming for the proud puffed up by lies, but for the meek and lowly. I am the giver of life. I make all things new. I cleanse and I purify and I rid man of all that is not me. Pride and arrogance are not of me. Those who believe they are, the only ones who can hear me speaking, are not of me. I give wisdom to all without measure. I am pouring out my words to many, but not all are understanding. Many are believing. They alone hold the mysteries. My people are suffering because they do not believe I am able to speak to them in great and mighty ways. They believe only some are chosen for this season, but I am calling many to my heart. Come and receive and believe that the same Holy Spirit dwells among and in you, that the gifts are for you and you are each chosen and designed with purpose and have a function in the body. You are all being called to sonship. Whew. You are all being called to freedom. You are all being shown the truth, yet not everyone has eyes to see. Pray for revelation, that the light of truth be seen and known by you. How can you say you cannot hear me? Do you not know my voice? I am ever speaking, children. I am ever reaching toward you. Let me hold you close and whisper in your ear. I have plans for you. 
plans for you to know true love, love that casts down all fear. I have healing waiting for you so that you can be free to walk in my truth and righteousness. Call out to me, lay your heavy burdens at my feet and let me lift you higher than you have ever dared to go. My children rise up, get up and walk. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made well? Hear me, daughter. Write these words. I am speaking to you now. The olive branch is the tree that is grafted in. The almond branch is that which gives life. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Listen to him. He brings dead things to life. This is his message. This is the good news. Go ye therefore into all the earth and be the light that brings dead things to life. I love you, sons and daughters. You are mine and I am yours. Consider deeply the truth of these words and weigh them. Who do you serve? Malachi 4, 6, Deuteronomy 5, 8, Hebrews 4, 8, and 6, 2, Mark 5, 4, Leviticus 2, 14, Zechariah 1, 5 through 8, Galatians 3, 4, and 5, 8, 1 Timothy 2, 4, Habakkuk 1, 2, and 2, 2, Song of Solomon 3, 4, 4, 2, Beatitudes, I am coming, and I will put all of those scriptures in the notes. All right, he just asked me to share a dream right here that I had a long time ago. Um, I don't have that journal even out here, um, but probably a year ago or so. And I don't have full revelation, but I will tell you what I know uh, because it seems to uh, fit here. Um, he talked about mocking and monitoring spirits. And uh, if you've been following this journey for a while, he has taken me up close and personal to some of those spirits. I have... Uh, come close to being deceived by them myself, but um, the Lord wants to set captives free, and he loves all people. And uh, I think in this video and in these series of videos, uh, he's going to lead us into a deeper understanding and hopefully help us all to get better at um, identifying and testing the spirit and uh, and knowing which which is the holy spirit and which is a close uh but counterfeit spirit uh, so the stream i had i was on san juan island and i know it was san juan because i've been there to that beach before and um, i wasn't really a participant in the dream but i was a observer of a girl who um, had dark hair she was wearing a bikini and uh, she was very joyful and happy and a very pleasant personality. And I could tell that she really loved her father in heaven and her father in heaven really loved her. And uh, there was this black helicopter and it snatched her up in a net and she seemed so happy. And for a moment, I thought that was her father too. And um, she was really happy in this, in this net, being close to her father, but being held up in the air where everyone could see. And I thought, I wonder why the father is in a black helicopter. And I was just noticing that it was black and the net was black. And um, I was a little confused about it. I felt a little um, unsettled. And then suddenly the net opened up and she fell into the water beneath her. There was a body of water there, and um, the girl was devastated, and I was devastated for her. Um, she felt very betrayed by her father. And then the true father of heaven pulled her out of the water. And um, the next scene, I'm in a room that's pristine. It's very, uh, it's almost um, like a factory or something, but everything is whitewashed. Everything's white, the floors, the walls, there's a bright light in there. And um, I'm looking into a garbage can and in the garbage can is a ripped up contract. And I have the understanding that that contract is gonna be put back together. And while she was in the water, someone who was of the enemy, um, it, was, it was like a, a brother to her, but a brother like that's been um, severed, you know, like a relationship that's been broken and the enemy was influencing this brother and the brother was pouring poison into the water. So when she dropped, when, when the true father had her released from the net, she dropped into the water, 
her brother was trying to poison the water. And the Lord snatched them both up and um, scolded the brother. And he had them in this white, bright room. And I was looking down at the garbage can with all of them surrounding it. So it was the father. There was an invisible person. That, that's the Holy Spirit. And um, actually, it was just the Holy Spirit. It's just the invisible person um, representing the father. The Holy Spirit was there. And um, the, the son and the daughter and, and the relationship was being reconciled. And I think this has so many meanings. I think that's what's going on in the church right now with the prophets and the believers um, and the enemy spirits and things. And then the, um, the, the believers being very accusational and condemning when the Lord just wants them free. And that's his heart's desire. And also when I had the dream at the time, um, it was before I, I met the girl that I think this represents when I had the dream at the time, I also had the word Israel. I understood the girl to be Israel. So I think it has multiple lev levels of meaning. And um, Israel can mean spiritual sons and daughters and can actually mean the literal country of Israel. And the enemy brother could be a country that's right now run by Satan um, trying to destroy Israel. So I think it has multiple layers, but that's how God is. When he speaks in parables, it has immediate meaning, it has meaning for the future, and it has uh, treasure hidden inside. So he just wanted me to share that there. I think some of you will have some revelation into what that means, uh, especially if you've uh, been following this channel and you kind of know um, the different seasons we've been through. I forgot to mention when I had that dream, I looked up what San Juan means, and it means John the Baptist. And uh, John the Baptist, we know, prepared the way for the Lord. Uh, he was the voice calling in the wilderness. Prepared, he was prepared the way for the Lord, and he was telling people to repent. And I just want to point out that prophecy is pattern, and so the Lord's patterns do repeat. The next thing he wanted me to say to you is, I have appointed times and seasons for you. I have set you apart. Come to me, my children. And the Bible says that at the appointed time, Jesus Christ came to the earth. So, and it says that he was crucified before time even began. So what that means is the Lord began all of this with a plan and he is sovereign and his will will be done, and his kingdom will come. And the Bible was written from a God who stands outside of time and very strategically wrote his word and very strategically made his plan to uh, achieve his will. And it will be done. Because Jesus came at the appointed time, it also says that he foreknew the chosen ones, uh, the ones that he chose, he foreknew. And he's chosen everyone. He foreknew everybody. And he has placed people in specific times <laughs> in the timeline by design. So if you're watching this, you are not here by accident. You're watching this because the creator of the universe has put this in front of you. He has, he could have put you anywhere in the timeline and he chose to put you here and now in this season at this time and he has purposes and he wants you to listen to him so he can reveal to you his plans for you so he can reveal himself to you, but mostly so he can reveal his love for you, to you. And the Holy Spirit's the only one that can reveal that to your heart. So if you are feeling any kind of stirring inside, any kind of nudging, it's your time. This is the time of your visitation. Respond to that. Open up your heart and let that in and say, Lord, your servant is listening. Lord, I'm listening. Lord, reveal yourself to me in a way I can understand. Lord, I think, I think you're calling me. Can you help me to hear you? And he will make a way. He will make a way for you. Somebody posted Acts 17, 24 and on. Uh, this morning on Facebook, I noticed, or sometime I, I noticed it on Facebook today, and um, I knew it was from the Lord for me to take note and read this to you, and I confirmed that with him, but everything is his. Um, so you can you can hear from the Lord in lots of ways. So if you say that prayer, um, Lord, I'm listening, 
begin to look for him, get, ask him for eyes to see, because he, he will speak in multitudes of ways. And when you hear his voice, it's a still, very quiet voice. And um, it's it's more of a sense to be developed. Um, so just learning to quiet your soul and get still before him in a place of rest. Ask him to help you with that and just sit in silence and see um, what he does. He can speak in a multiple ways. Some people see things, um, see words. Some people hear the words bubble up from inside. Some people um, get visions, different things. But also just out in life, you know, you might notice a, a, a truck that says something and you know it's for you from God. Um, you might see something on Facebook right in the moment that's confirming what you're thinking. Uh, you might open your Bible and it speaks directly to you exactly what, what um, you need to hear. So there's just a multiple ways. It might be through another person. They might speak directly from the Lord without even knowing they're doing it. I experienced that a lot. Um, so he speaks and his voice comes across in many waters in many ways. Just begin to seek him with all of your heart and you're going to find him. He promises that. So Acts 20, 17, 24 says, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them, and the exact places where they should live. That's how precise he is and how personal. God did this so that men would seek him, and perhaps reach out for him, and find him. Though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. Okay, now he wants me to read from Isaiah 42, which talks about how he um, brought justice to the nations. So uh, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, planned before even creation, everything was made through him and for him and because of him. He brought justice to the earth by taking on the curse of sin himself and offering us life everlasting. And it's a free gift. Isaiah 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what the Lord God says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you into to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another or praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them, let the desert and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. 
Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord will march out like a mighty man, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out. I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and the hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Hear, you deaf, look, you blind, and see. Who is blind but my servant? Who is deaf like the messenger I sent? Who is blind like the one committed to me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but you have paid no attention. Your ears are open, but you hear nothing. It pleased the Lord for the sake of his righteousness to make his law great and glorious. But this is a people plundered and looted, all of them trapped in pits or hidden away in prisons. They have become plunder with no one to rescue them. They have been made loot with no one to say, send them back. Which of you will listen to this or pay close attention in time to come? Who handed Jacob over to become loot and, and Israel to the plunderers? Was it not the Lord? against whom we have sinned, for they would not follow his ways. They did not obey his law, so he poured out on them his burning anger, the violence of war. It enveloped them in flames, yet they did not understand. It consumed them, but they did not take it to heart. Okay, then he asked me to read this short portion from a word received on November 3rd. Daughter, the days ahead are going to turn to night. It will be dark in this world. The light of my truth is going to cut through and revive many. But still some will be lost in the darkness, groping to find a way out. They will stumble and lose their direction because they based it all on dark deeds and material accumulation. Melissa, the way to be set free is to call on me now, to look for me now before the great and dreadful day comes. It will be like no other. It will sneak up on many and catch them off guard. Melissa, they will suffer much loss and the whole earth will experience much destruction. But old buildings must be torn down to establish the new. This is how it is and how it, this is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. The foundations will be shaken and all will see their fragile state. I am the solid rock, the firm foundation. Together the whole earth will praise my name, and the new foundation will be established once and for all. It will never fade away. It will be established for all time. Tell me what you want to know. Okay, so I was just reading, um, tell me what you want to know, and that's really interesting because I had a dream uh, back in October, and I was asking him for revelation about that, and that was one of the things that he said to read or to tell you about. So that's amazing to me. Okay, so um, just a segment of the dream. There was um, I live near a town called Rome. Um, there's kind of a T intersection, but in my dream it was more like a four-way intersection right there, and uh, I was being forced to buy. To go into debt and buy this black Ford truck and um, I looked up pictures that looked like a 1952 truck and when I looked up 1952 and Strong's it said wealth by implication enough for not riches substance wealth to fall short not to suffice for um, and there was a black man walking along the road and he wouldn't look me in the eye he kept his head low he looked sad and so um, I had questions about that. I wanted to know what these things meant. And um, he said the black truck is about racism. It's about control. 
it is about not holding much weight. The back of it um, was really small, it was like a bubble back with hardly any room to carry anything. It's not able to carry everything that it claims. It has been an idea passed around from one generation to the next. What was the money transfer? Oh, I had to like transfer money from account to account to get this. And he said the banking system exchanges and transfers people like commodity. They make decisions and rule over my people and keep them enslaved. The black man, he would not look you in the eye because he was not able to overcome his fears. He believed there was no solution, no way to overcome. It was inwardly both he was inwardly both angry and defeated. Rome, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to the system of financial control, a type of racism, people who are unwanted, not needed, so they can abuse them, yet a necessary part of their system. So those are some notes uh, that he spoke to me when I was asking for revelation about what the dream meant. So when I had the dream, uh I asked him about it and then later I asked him for more revelation I believe um, he said that my people will be delivered from the slave system I am the balm of Gilead the cure for all this world and that same night I had another dream where I couldn't find my Bible and I was looking all over and I found it in this like plastic big Tupperware type thing storage bin and um, inside of the storage bin my bible was in there but it was a big tote of all kinds of medicines and there was one i pulled out and i was looking at it and i and it was like a cure-all and i was fascinated with that and he spoke to me balm of gilead so some notes i took um because of the Ford truck, I look up. I looked up Ford in the Bible, and I got Fords of Arnon, and I learned that Fords are a place where you can cross by foot over a river. And um, today, when I was asking him about it, he said, "I am giving the people time to return to me." So crossing the Jordan into the Promised Land, he's luring the water so that people can cross by foot, and he is um, giving us time. A little bit of time out of his grace and mercy to to come back to him and um, also somehow that was connected to Moab and Moab was the son of Lot and Lot's oldest daughter um, survived the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah so they were snatched out of there so that's related so that's related to the tribulation time and uh, so that was interesting. Somehow, Fords of Arnon were connected. I just have one last note related to that section of the dream in my margin, and it said, Many people think politics or a person or religion can fix this mess, but only Jesus is sufficient. Okay, now he wants me to read from Haggai 1, 3 through 14, and it says, uh, the title is, The Call to Rebuild the Temple. And uh, remember now, we are the temple that houses the presence of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew on the earth, its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine, the oil and whatever the ground produces on men and cattle and on the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, 
Joshua, son of Jehozadak, and the high priest, the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai because the Lord their God had sent him and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. And my husband's been studying a lot about the silent years between um, Malachi and Matthew. Uh, in the Bible, there was, you know, like 400 years of silence. There were no prophets or anything like that. And um, during that time, though, the Lord was very busy pre preparing the scene for Jesus to arrive. He came at the appointed time, the exact right time he came. And uh, the world was hungry for him and ready to receive him. Uh, the way that information could be passed was at its peak for the time, um, you know, the, the roads in Rome were really good and um, there was a common language that, they, that people shared. And so it was just a prime time to be able to share and get the gospel out and for it to spread through the earth. And, um, but what's really interesting about that time is almost all of Daniel's prophecies came to pass during that time. And so the book of Malachi, the book of Daniel, all the prophets kind of um, come together in the book of Daniel. Even Revelation is connected. And uh, a lot of that was fulfilled, but there's still one week missing. And um, it kind of feels like that again. Uh, prophecy is pattern. The Lord is going to arrive and he is going to come again at the appointed time. And it's going to be after a period where it's felt kind of silent. Um, it's going to be when people are really hungry, it's going to be a time when the temple is kind of a mess. And uh, John the Baptist came onto the scene and prepared the way for the Lord during that time. All right, this is Jesus clearing the temple in John 2. Jesus encounters belief and unbelief from the, pe from the people. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle, he scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Can we just hear that in a previous scripture? Oh my goodness, Lord. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. He did not need men's testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. So when he, um, he got his whip out and he chased, he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area. And so that's talking about judgment in the outer court. And um, this video, the main part of it, is going to teach us about what the wilderness represents in the Bible. And the outer court is another picture of the wilderness. And he's judging the church first before he brings judgment to the earth. But his judgment is intended to bring people to repentance and to bring them into the kingdom and to restore them to life 
So it is out of mercy and grace that he does this. And the, um, the sheep and the cattle and the doves, they all represent things of the Holy Spirit. And so people were making money off of things um, that were of the Holy Spirit and um, trying to um, misrepresent the Holy Spirit. And he was chasing them out of there. But it's interesting that he also chased the Holy Spirit. It's kind of symbol symbolism for um, chasing the spirit filled out from the outer courts. Um, so it's just important maybe to note a couple of things in here. That um, J Jesus went to the outer court and he brought out a whip. And so that's bringing judgment to the outer court. The outer court is a representation of uh, the wilderness. And so we're going to mostly in this video explore what the wilderness means exactly. But another picture of our faith journey, one picture is uh, the wilderness experience through the Jordan and into the promised land, three stages. Well, the temple is another example of that faith journey, the outer court, the inner court. The outer court is the wilderness. The inner court is the uh, Jordan River. And then the Holy of Holies is the promised land. And so um, he, it's interesting that he is bringing judgment in this picture to the, to the outer court of the church first. And so he does this out of his grace and his mercy because he does this with the intention of bringing people to repentance and bringing them into the promised land and into the kingdom. And so he makes a whip that's judgment and he scatters all those who are uh, selling sheep and cattle and um, and doves. And all of those represent Holy Spirit and um, the kosher animal and the, the cloven hooves and things. That actually represents spirit-filled people. So that's just very interesting to me. Hosea 6, 1 through 3 and uh, 10 and 11. This is called Israel's Punishment, Israel Unrepentant. And remember um, that Israel also represents spiritual sons and daughters. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like winter rains, like spring rains that water the earth. And uh, right now it is gently raining and it is spring. Uh, so that's interesting to me. Um, some translations say autumn rains and uh, typically autumn and spring are, I've noticed. Uh, he keeps pairing those things together for a reason. And... Um, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us. It's been two days. If every day is like a thousand years, like the Bible says, it's been two days since Jesus um, came and died and was resurrected. Hosea 6, 10 and 11 says, I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There Ephraim is given to prostitution and Israel is defiled. Also for you, Judah, a harvest is appointed whenever I would restore the fortunes of my people. And uh, harvest times, spring and fall in Israel. He wants me to read a word I received on January 17th, 2024. Melissa, do not fear. I love you, daughter. You are mine and I am yours. And I said, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. The days to come are going to bring many to repentance. The days ahead are there to remind man of my name. I am. I am the one true God, creator of heaven and earth. I am the lifter of your head. I am the glorious one. Melissa, do not wonder if it is me writing these words. I have been the one speaking to you. Do you have the ability to place these words on this paper? Can you determine the course of your path? Melissa, these are the words of your maker. These are the gifts from above. You must begin to believe this to be true. You must imagine a greater calling and you must step forward in faith into the plans I have for you. Do not fear, dear one. You are moving and growing. Even when you do not know, I am ever present and I am calling you toward me and guiding your steps. Melissa, come to me again. Begin again. 
following my voice and desire and desire me above all things find time to worship me and listen to and listen for me you are wandering I am not going to let you go you will begin again and you will see I am the one who rules over even the lost hours spent running from me and this is the wilderness experience hear me I'm going to reverse the curse of sin on man I'm going to bring bring many to repentance they will be made new and the whole world will become my throne I'm going to reveal to you my deepest desires I'm going to give you many weeks to prepare the banquet table I am going to give you the bread of life you will soon see that I am the one speaking these words to you you will begin to say yes when I give you a task you will run from your you will not run from your calling you will rejoice in all that I am able to accomplish Melissa have I failed you yet I am not finished we have just begun I'm about to show you the path that leads to my door it is the work of the Holy Spirit in the earth that delivers people to my feet I am the Alpha the Omega the first and the last I am the good father and I am the one who is the ancient of days I am the shepherd and I am the anointed one I am all of the names assigned I am he Melissa do not give your fears another opportunity to convince you you are no longer hearing from me I have spoken these things to you so that they so that the world can know the nature of my voice so they can begin to recognize my voice above all the other voices Melissa the days ahead are the for the lost to return to their one true God they are to help them see and to become free the days will reveal their hearts condition and they will show them they have wandered away from the giver of life I am he I am the one they long for I am the one who brought them forth and will deliver them from the enemy do not give even a thought to how many are against you they are but for a moment I am for all time I am the everlasting eternal God go now find me in the word find me in worship give me your heart your hands your feet climb onto my lap and wait for your next assignment You are going to conquer your fears. You are going to conquer. I'm sorry. You're going to conquer your fears and doubts. And you will do all I have asked you to do. My child, I am your dad. I am your Abba father. I am your friend. I am he. Do not wonder about this. I am. Melissa, I am. I love you. Come to me now and we will share a meal at the table in my father's house. This one is from 1216. He wants me to read it again. This is one I've read before. And, um, but he wants me to read it again. It's a short one. Uh, I guess on my mind that morning when I woke up, the song, It's No Longer I Who Live But Christ in Me, was playing. Daughter, you do not need to wonder whether or not I will speak to you. I am ever speaking. I am ever reaching toward you. How does the infant grow into a child and a child into a man? I am your father. I am leading you and ever present as you grow. Melissa, how do you say to me, Lord, what is your name? Is it Jesus? Is it Father? Is it Holy Spirit? Melissa, I am is my name. I am the one who was and is and is to come. I am he. I am the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am everlasting to everlasting. I am the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I am the one high and lifted up and throned above. And I am the one who will rule and reign the eternal kingdom established in the earth. Melissa, I am is my name. Go, Melissa, and teach them about I am. Teach them about my heart and my desire for them to come home to my love teach them to worship me in spirit and in truth teach them all that I have shown you in the blueprints teach them to consider the lilies of the field 
Even Solomon in all of his splendor was not clothed so well as one of them. They are clothed in the majesty of my glory, my righteousness, my mercy, my grace. They are mine and I am theirs. Theirs is the kingdom. I am their inheritance. I am their portion and I am enough. I am and there's a bunch of scripture there if there's room. I'll probably just list the scripture in the notes since there's so many um, words that I'm reading. So you can look them up. Uh, but I'll make a list and I'll separate them by date. And he asked me to read from Romans 11. And this title of this section is The Remnant of Israel. And then it goes into engrafted branches. And we'll finish with All Israel Will Be Saved. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left and they are trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer by works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. What then? What Israel sought so earnestly, it did not obtain. But the elect did. The others were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes so that they could not see, and ears so that they could not hear to this very day. And David says, may their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see, and their backs be bent forever. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall? beyond recovery? No, not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world, and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will be, I'm sorry, how much greater riches will their fullness bring? I am talking to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the re reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief and you, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not perish in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you are cut out of an olive tree that is, a, by, is wild by nature and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, 
and so all Israel will be saved as, as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob, and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. The Lord just reminded me of a short story that happened yesterday that he wants me to include right here. So I was driving home from lunch or something yesterday and we were in the car and I said, Lord, I want my whole family brought into the ark. All of them. I'm believing for that. The whole family, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, every one of them. Lord, bring them into the ark. And um, so I just had that prayer. And we got home, and because the video was made Saturday night, I just assumed my expectation was that it happened Saturday night so that it could be released on Resurrection Sunday. That made sense to me. I didn't really seek him on that. I just thought that must have been the plan. So I'm out there trying, and I knew that he wanted me to attach the two dreams I'm about to share. So I'm out there trying to share these dreams, and I can't. Like, it just will not flow. I must have taken, like... I don't know how many takes I kept stopping it just it just would not flow and I'm like it must be it's just not meant to be today and I felt kind of disappointed about that I felt a little confused by that but while I was out there making that video uh, somebody in my family that I didn't expect to show up um, that doesn't come by very often shows up and sees me making this video out there and asks what I'm doing so I, you know I walk up and um, they're talking to Abe and everything and and that's what I was doing. I was like, oh, I'm just out there making a video. And they're like, for what? And I said, YouTube. Um, and they said, oh, that sounds interesting. A nature video? I'm like, something like that. And I didn't share, you know. And, and they said, well, send it to me. I'd like to see that. And this morning they called again and said, I really would like to see whatever video that was that you're making. And so I just really had to repent. Um, because I made... A lot of assumptions about that person and just wasn't willing to share because I didn't think they'd receive it and I don't think that we can make that judgment and I just really had to repent for that because I believe all of that happened so that this person could get this message and uh, I'm just like wow God and I felt like it was an answer to my prayer to bring the whole family into the ark and so uh, anyway, share this message and um, and don't make judgments, you know, if you think people are going to receive it or not, because God is making people's hearts ready and hungry so that they uh, can be fed. He's about to feed everybody. Okay, so the video I'm, I've attached to this and I'm about to share with you uh, was made, it was finished on Saturday. I've been making it for a while uh, with the Lord and... Um, you know, he promised uh, videos that would be like small meals, small lessons, and I'm going to tell about that dream again for those of you who have not heard that and kind of his instructions and what that means. Um, but he has prepared a banquet table for us, and this is a big meal, but this is one to make us and allow us to grow in maturity before receiving these, um, these other meals. So this one is uh, one to chew on and digest. 
and to really uh, seek the Lord on some of these things and begin to seek him for yourself to hear his voice and his purposes for you in this time. And so these next videos that are coming are preparing us for, for what is to come. And uh, I don't know when for sure, but I have an idea of the season uh, that we're entering just based on things he said to me and the signs and the things that we're all seeing. So so the first dream I'm going to tell you about uh, is just a short scene. It took place in my living room about, I had the dream about a month to two months ago. And my friend from church was sitting on the couch and she represents the Holy Spirit in my dreams. And she was sitting on my couch with a laptop open and she was waiting for me to come over so that she could show me a lesson. And I started to uh, sit down with her and then all of a sudden I saw that there was a mess of dried brown rice on the ground. And so I quickly uh, got down on the ground. I was so distracted by this. I felt an urgency to clean up this rice. And I said, go ahead and talk. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll listen while I clean this up. And so I'm busy cleaning this up. And all of a sudden it occurred to me that I really didn't know how much time went by. And I looked and she was sitting in silence waiting for my attention. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, you must be so mad at me. And her face started to get really red and swollen. And I think that's why I, I apologize because I could see she was angry. And her face got to the point where it was unrecognizable. It's just big and puffy. And um, I, I was like, I am so sorry. I, I didn't realize I wasn't listening. And she goes, I'm not mad at you. At least, at least you are listening. And she goes, I've got to get out of here. And she left. And during that, I looked down at my hands, and in my hands I had a little pile of rice and some little black paper clips. <laughs> and there was like a still shot, just like a, a photograph of that in my mind. And I thought, wow, that was very uncharacteristic of her. She doesn't usually get angry. And that was the dream. And so it was revealed to me that what that meant was um, she represented the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us that that's the living room she, the holy spirit he he dwells inside of us and that's where he lives and he's just waiting just waiting uh to reveal to us lessons and to teach us and to counsel us and to guide us and we grieve the holy spirit when we don't allow the holy spirit to lead us in our lives and the Holy Spirit is described as a dove because it takes flight. It doesn't leave us, but it's kind of a, a metaphor or a picture of what happens when the Holy Spirit is grieved. The Holy Spirit, um, when we're at rest, the Holy Spirit rests on us. And when we're at rest, we can receive from the Holy Spirit. But when we're busy and distracted by the messes of our life, um, we are grieving the Holy Spirit who wants to guide us through that mess. And... What was amazing to me is I was sharing that with one of the retired pastors that go to my church, that dream, and he said, what, the, what I hear the Holy Spirit saying through that is what you thought was a mess was actually food for you. And I was just like, wow, that's awesome. Uh, I've thought about that so much, and uh, it's absolutely true. The messes in my life that I thought just were um, just terrible and catastrophic, he has used them as food for me to grow me and mature me. And in James 1, it says, uh, consider all joy, the trials and temptations, the messes of our life, because we are to persevere for, through those things because perseverance brings us to maturity. And so that that's one thing that the Lord wanted me to share, um, the revelation of that dream. But the other thing is when I was asking, Lord, what did the rice in my hand represent in the paper clips? He says, um, that he's going to be preparing small meals for us that are easily digested and easily grasped. So those little paper clips with the little clips on them um, were, were representing that they're going to be short messages that we can grasp easily. Well, I was telling my friend who was the Holy Spirit in my dream, I was telling her about that. And she said, the very day I called her, I was excited to tell her about it and the revelation and everything. Um, and there's even more because it went with exactly with what happened at our 
Wednesday night, we were having training on listening skills. And the story that was shared, and I had this dream prior to going, aligned perfectly on a different level. Um, so that was like the Holy Spirit meaning, but it also had a literal level of meaning because the things that happened that night happened in that dream. And I was just like, oh, that was, I never experienced that. That was really awesome. So I couldn't wait to tell her about it. She wasn't there that night, but her husband's told a story about her getting really angry in the night because they have this thermostat war. And he click, 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 clicks his thermostat up and she clicks it down because she likes to have her face cool and her body warm. And she got really mad because he didn't turn the thermostat down and she woke up and her face was so hot. And, and after the, um, Wednesday night, I'm driving home. I'm like, oh my goodness, that dream. And I was just like, I couldn't believe it that he told that story about her face getting hot and everything is just like my dream. But anyway, I'll tell that probably another time, that part of it and the lesson that came out of that. But, um, so this is how the Lord does, you know, he has this dream, but it's got like all these different applications. It's, it is phenomenal. The mind of our Lord, he is just beyond comprehension that he can do these things. But, um, so I was telling her about the dream and she told me that that day she had just bought from Amazon this giant bag of brown rice. Um, like she'd never done that before. Like just this huge, I forgot how many pound bag of, of brown rice. And that she had opened her drawer that day and her eyes fixed on those kind of paper clips. And she thought, I need to, to use some of those. And then she was in her car and um, those paper clips were in her lap for some reason. And she stood up and they fell off of her lap. She's like, they're just showing up everywhere. And so that's what I mean. Like the things that happen in her life, they always affirm what the Holy Spirit's doing. And so that's how it is with the Lord. He, he sends witnesses to the fact that he's speaking. And so uh, that was the first dream he wanted to, me to share. The second dream is a quick dream also. And uh, this one, I don't remember when I had it. Um, several months, maybe six months ago, I don't really remember. And I'm somewhere on the East Coast where there's a giant stadium of some sort and all the people are in the stadium observing this ball game and I'm standing outside of the stadium waiting. And somebody brings me a horse. I think it's the Holy Spirit because it's an invisible person. Leads me a horse. I jump on the horse and I ride as fast as I can ride from the East Coast to the West Coast. So I, I end up in the state of Washington. And now I'm off my horse and I'm running through the airport. And I feel like I don't know if I'm going to get there in time. Um, I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying. To, I've got uh, in a like a goal and I'm trying to arrive at this goal. And so I get to the airport and there's a person selling tickets. I get to this ticket counter and then I'm, I notice that they also sell food at the ticket counter of the airport and they've got a rotisserie type thing with sausages on it. And I look in and I can see that in the center of the sausage is a cheesy layer. And so I have, again, another photographic like picture of this burned into my mind of that scene. And then I'm on the airplane and I'm flying and I fly to Israel and that's the end of the dream. So I was asking the Lord for a revelation on that. Every time I get these dreams, they seem so crazy, like I'll never understand them. But he said um, that the horse in the state of Washington was to make me think of Paul Revere and that I had a message and that I was trying to get it to the ends of the earth with him as fast as I could. And... Um, when I got to the airport, he was saying that the person that was selling the, also the food, the ticket out of here is hidden in the meaty layer of the Bible. The ticket out of here. And uh, so the taking flight, I think, is rapture. In the Bible, it says that we are not to boast because, because of Israel um, becoming blind the Gentiles were grafted in 
And then when the fullness of the Gentiles is brought in, and I believe rapture takes place, that is Israel is, is it's time for the Israelites, um, or it's time for Israel, I'm sorry, to have their eyes unblinded. And uh, that will bring them the truth when, when they see that happen. So I think that is my understanding of that scripture. So there might be multiple layers of meaning to all of that, but that's the part I understand now that I'm supposed to share right now. And I was wrestling with the cheese part the other day um, before church. I was like, Lord, I still don't understand why cheese. I don't, I don't remember any time in scripture where cheese is mentioned. <laughs> What's cheese got to do with the, with the, the truth hidden in the meaty layer? Like, give me a better understanding of the cheese. So that was my prayer before church. So I don't I don't remember exactly what day I had that prayer um, before church. Sometime I was getting ready for church. I don't know which service or anything. I just know I was in the bathroom getting ready when I prayed that to the Lord. And on Saturday we went to Abe's uh, mom's for dinner, and uh, somebody had brought this smoked um, what was it smoked uh, cream cheese, and it was like in uh, you know how they usually are like in a brick. But it was flattened out, so it was bigger like a loaf, and it actually was shaped like a bread loaf. And they had put a design into the top of it, and um, it was it kind of had a crusty layer, so it looked like bread. And it had some uh, herbs and things on top. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. And I was a little bit afraid at first that it was goat cheese, because I, I try goat cheese. I just can't do it. But it just looked so amazing that I had to try it. So... Um, I tried it, it had some pepper jelly or something that went on it, and I had the thoughts like, I think this is like literally the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. I I was thinking, I want to be alone with this cheese. Like, I want all the distractions to go. I want to be alone with this so I can just focus on the flavor of this cheese and like savor this and uh, totally live into this moment because it's so good. I was like having these thoughts. I was like, this cheese is like heavenly, and I was thinking... Um, if, if I could choose one thing to live on for the rest of my life, it would be this. And how can I copy this? How can I make this smoked cheese? Cause we have a smoker. Uh, these were the thoughts I was having crazy. I know, but it was really good. And uh, I was obsessing about it. So, um, later when I was sleeping, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie fireproof, but the guy like jumps, sits upright in bed and he says, tomato sauce or tomato juice or whatever. Um, it's like a funny scene when he had like a revelation of what somebody had told him and he couldn't believe that that guy played that trick on him. Well, I kind of sat upright in bed. I was like, the cheese. So the cheese is his love. So just um, that feeling that I was having with, with the cheese, being in love with God to that level that there's nothing else. You want all the distractions away from you. You just want to be in his presence being in love with him at that level and having that kind of intimacy and that kind of desire for him that kind of craving for him that kind of i don't want anything else just him that is our ticket out of here that is the bride of christ he is looking for worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth and are in love with him and receive and the only reason we love is because he first loved us and so we, when we receive that love uh, we are free and we get healed in our because we're all broken in our ability to love. Perfect love is the only thing that casts away fear. We all have fear and um, soulish desires attached to love. Only his perfect love can cure that. When we receive that, we are freed up to love him back. And he is looking for such worshipers. And that is the ticket out of here. And that is the layer that is going to be disclosed, um, I think, that hidden layer that we've been blinded to because we've been looking through a lens of fear and a soulish lens. He's removing that from our eyes and he's going to show us this layer of scripture and pay attention because if you want to get out of here, you've got to get this. And this is the, the reason I was created is to share this with you in this hour. He told me that I was going to go on a journey of a lifetime with him. I feel like I already have just because just being in an intimate relationship with my creator, God, and knowing him as a person 
has been a journey of a lifetime. But he says we haven't even started yet. So we're just now, all of this has been preparation. All these two years has been preparation for this season. And we are now entering in. And I've got a message from the Lord to deliver to the ends of the earth. And it is game time that Dream said, because I was at that game, he said, I would know when it's time to shut myself in. And I would know when it was game time. And it's game time. And there is... <laughs> He's given us a grace period to cross over into the promised land on this side of the veil. He's given us a period to do that. And John the Baptist, when he came into uh, the picture, it was much like the scene now. And it was about repentance and it brought revival. The Lord is giving us a period, an opportunity to be revived before he comes back. So I hope you will... I know this is a long video, but I hope you hang in there with it. And I hope you watch the entire thing from start to finish, maybe a couple times, because this is serious. This is serious. This is real. God is real. Pray for him to remove the blindness from your eyes. The Bible is real. God is real. You have a creator. He sees you. He knows you. He is not far off. He is reaching for you. Call out to him. Okay, so he wants me to finish with this message, and this is the summary of everything you've just listened to and watched and thought about and considered. He wants this to be the final uh, summary for this video. And um, anytime I talk about Israel, uh, it's hard for me to get through it. I get really emotional. I just feel his emotion. It's intense. And... Um, I'm just hoping for grace and mercy to get through this uh, because when I was reading it in the house, I was reading over it and I just started like wailing, crying, like I've never cried before. And it made me think of like somebody who would be in sackcloth and ashes and just uh, wailing for the loss of their only, only child or something. It was some intense emotion. And um, so that that's... <laughs> amazing to me that that, that that experience happened. So hopefully it's just so that I could tell you about it and not experience it here in front of everybody. But if that's how it is, that's how it is. And I, I'm thinking back to the first time the Lord spoke to me about Israel and called Israel the apple of his eye. And when I looked it up, that was scriptural. And I didn't remember that in scripture. I didn't know that he referred to Israel as the apple of his eye. And since then, I've learned that Israel is the center of the world. And Jerusalem is the center of Israel. And the temple center of Jerusalem. The temple is the center of Jerusalem. So let me say that again. Israel is the center of the world. Jerusalem is the center of Israel. And the temple is the center of Jerusalem. That sounds like an eye, you know. It goes in and they're in the center of it. Um, that's amazing to me. So he says, take up your pen and draft for me a love letter to the nations. And this was back, I think, in November. I want you to tell them of my great love for them. And guys, I was getting dream interpretation. I was, and all of a sudden, this is what he says to me. It was very random, and it struck me as very, like, whiplashy, and just like, oh my goodness, that it was just a strange experience that all of a sudden I'm writing Take up your pen and draft for me a love letter to the nations. But he already had this day and what I'm speaking to you about planned. Um, and, and this is together with that dream about the bank system and everything. So, you know, I couldn't see through his eyes at that time. Everything seemed very random to me. But now um, it's coming together and it has uh, an order to it. It has a purpose. And he was putting it in me back then to read to you today. Take up your pen and draft for me a love letter to the nations. I want you to tell them of my great love for them. To my people Israel. <laughs> I am the Yahweh, the God of the universe, the one true God. I 
I have beckoned you to come to me since the days of Abraham. I have called you and summoned you and collected you and dispersed you. I have moved mightily in the earth on your behalf. I have made you into a mighty nation and I have made you small. I have never stopped loving you, Israel. You are my chosen people. You are the apple of my eye. You are the nation of all nations from the line of Judah, the people of God, my servants, my prophets, my teachers of the law. You have been a faithful people. You have lived devout lives, lives intended to honor me. You are sure to gain favor for your attitude of service and lives of honor. I am pleased with your steadfastness. Do you not know who I am? Do you even know your creator God is indeed one? I am he, and my name is Jesus. Does this offend your deaf ears? My children, apply some balm. Let me heal your wounds of offense. Let me deliver you from your bondage and your religious ways. I am the Messiah. I came to set you free. I came to deliver you from your captivity. I am your Messiah. I am the one you crucified. I am he. I suffered and died to set you free. I am the one prophesied of through Isaiah. I hung on the tree, crushed for your iniquities. I have not stopped loving you. I died knowing your position toward me. Have you not heard? Do you not know the good news? Have your ears still not heard? I died for you, Israel. I am your Messiah. I love you with an everlasting love. To my people, my true worshipers, the descendants of my promise, my spiritual children, the ones scattered throughout the earth, I have set you apart. I have called you out of this world. I have saved you for myself. I have created you with careful thought and precision. I have made known to you the mysteries and revealed to you the truth. You have loved me as I have loved you. You are children of the promised one, the savior of the world. I have known you from before the foundations of the earth were laid. I have sought you and beckoned you and have gathered you in close. I have imagined a world and I have done it. I have made a place for you in my eternal kingdom. I have ransomed you, redeemed you, and called you by name. I have not abandoned you. I am making all things new. You will soon see what all of this has been for. You will soon know how my deep, you will soon know how deep and how wide and how great is my love for my very own treasures hidden throughout the earth for me and from me. I have established an everlasting covenant of sonship. I have made you co-heirs. I have given you the keys to the kingdom. You will rule and reign with the Lord Most High. You will have your reward. You will experience all I have for you. I, your creator, the one who knows you completely. I have redeemed you and restored you to myself. I am yours and you are mine. The other night in the middle of the night, I woke up and I heard this. So I scribbled it down on a little note by my bed. I am the God of the universe. I love you, sons and daughters. I am giving you this message through my servant, Melissa, to heed my warning. Listen to me, dear children. I am calling to you. Do not turn a deaf ear. <laughs> Do not run away, but turn to me. Hear my words. I am going to move mountains for you. Come home to my love.